microfluidic platform is of potential to uh, par parallelization of that DNA sequencing, PCR, single cell analysis and at the same time it is largely used for biochemical analysis like DNA and proteins and other metabolites also. Nowadays lab on chip is coming to the picture to reduce the time necessary for biochemical analysis at the same time it can integrate the different discrete steps in one platform by which we can study that several parameters in a short period of time. So, in all the fields we are utilizing that fluid flow of microfluidics for all the experiments. In this lecture we shall go through that how that PCR means polymerase chain reactions for DNA analysis and microarray technology are adopted in microfluidic platform to assay that gene analysis particularly for gene expression then uh, mutations etcetera. So, first we shall go through that in which way we have designed that the gene analysis. First we shall go through that from cell or starting material is say single cell or maybe a, a cell mass like tissue. From that we have to extract nucleic acid either DNA and RNA by solid phase extraction. Then we shall go for polymerase chain reaction. Why polymerase chain reactions? Because it helps to multiply that DNA to a large quantity by which we can measure. From polymerase chain reactions, we can go for DNA sequencing and DNA microarray, but in that lecture we shall not go for DNA sequencing mainly DNA microarray and how that polymerase chain reactions will be integrated in that lab on a chip platform by which we can get that readouts like the how much DNA is there or, or what are the DNA expression level of the cells all those things we shall go through it. So, how that your starting material is say, say cells say in any of the following methods will be adopted for cell lysis may be thermal lysis, ultrasonic lysis, electrical lysis or mechanical lysis. More or less all, of, all these processes are adopted in microfluidic platform. Then after cell lysis DNA and RNA should be extracted. In that extraction process generally that solid phase extraction principle is adopted by which the DNA RNA will be absorbed in the uh, absorption particle like silica particle at pH 7.5 at high ionic strength and it will be eluted at buffer of low ionic strength around pH 7 to 8.5. After that extraction that DNA will be flowing through the fluidic channel to that PCR platform. So, what is PCR? PCR is a polymerase chain reactions by which we can amplify the DNA fragments for analysis like say cloning, sequencing, pathogen detection, genotyping etcetera. So, basic steps of polymerase chain reaction is that say you have a DNA template then the polymerase chain mix means solutions contents that primers one is forward primer another is reverse primer then tack polymerase then all the nucleotides A T G C deoxyribonucleotides in a PCR tube around say 20 microliter volume. So, principle is that first you have to denature that DNA to making a single standard at 95 degree centigrade stand separates. Then that primers forward and reverse primers will anneal with that your DNA strands. Then after annealing the DNA polymerase will extend that primers to that end of that DNA. So, from one DNA we will be getting two DNA. Again that same type of cycle is going on in that way 
around 20 to 30 cycles it will be run in that thermocycler and you will be getting enough DNA by which we can detect uh, detection method may be a gel may be a capillary electrophoresis. So, for this method you need at least say 10 to the power 11 molecules of DNA or more than that by which it can be detected either fluorescent method or by uh, agarose or polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis method. And if we want to go for RNA detection then we have to isolate that messenger RNA means which are say we are looking for uh, DNA expression level in a cell or in a tissue then you have to isolate that uh, like nucleic acid which contains DNA and RNA, RNA. From that you have to isolate that oligo DT column that messenger RNA then you can get that messenger RNA. So, you can do that messenger RNA con it will be converted to DNA by using reverse transcriptase. So, in that process for the if you want to do PCR using that messenger RNA to DNA then PCR it can be done by two ways one is first is your single step process second is your two step process. In single step process in the mixture messenger RNA reverse transcriptase DNA polymerase buffers and DNTPs then you give sequence specific primer by which in one step that uh, a PCR reaction will be going on. And if we go to two step then first you give oligo DT by which you will be getting that uh, specific generation of full length cDNA from polyatel then you give sequence specific or random primer then that polymer chain reaction will be going on then you will be getting that enough DNA. So, how to analyze this PCR product? PCR product could be analyzed by slab gel using agarose gel or polyacrylamide gel this is demonstrated here like your PCR product is say 900 base pair. So, you give a ladder then you give that your product you will be knowing that what is your base pair of that PCR product to know that what is that gene of interest or sequence of interest you are looking for the PCR product. And this uh, 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 it takes about time around say uh, 15 to 20 minutes. On the other hand you can do the same type of experiment using capillary electrophoresis and uh, it is very much compatible to microfluidic platform it took about around say uh, 5 minute and detection by UV. Uh, method and these are the bands which could be quantified. So, in this PCR so far we discussed this is a relatively qualitative PCR. If you want to do quantitative PCR means how much really uh, DNA was there in your sample or, a high or how many DNA should be expressed in quantitatively then this type of PCR is not good. In that situation we have to give we have to follow that relative quantitative PCR using that your probe like say Tachman probe. Tachman probe. Tachman probe is nothing but a DNA sequence you can tell that it is a like a, a primer type of sequence specific to gene of interest which has a two fluorophores it is a fret pair this fluorophore fluorescence is quenched by that this is a quencher. In presence of these two fluorophores you will be getting no fluorescence and when that chain is progressing means a cycle after cycle then that DNA polymerase is progressing and when it is coming to that place it has a 5 prime to 3 prime exonucleage activity it will cut that your fluorophore and fluorescence will be getting. That means, chain progression quantitatively could be measured by measuring that fluorescence and at the same time with the uh, relative fluorescence and that number of cycles going on we can plot and from this plot we can generate this type of that curve from which we can determine that how much your DNA present in the in your PCR tube at the beginning at the means in zero time. 
So, in that curve will be seen digital, it looks like a general growth curve of bacteria. Say this is a baseline phase around say 10 to 15 cycles, then this is the exponential phase around say 20, uh, 15 to 20 cycles, then it is a linear phase, then split to phase. And that equation, basic equation for that exponential phase, the n t equal to n 0 into e plus 1 by c q to the power c q. c q is that threshold cycle number at the exponential phase, where that n t is the number of amplicon molecules at fluorescent threshold, e is the amplicon efficiency and n 0 is the initial number. Actually, our target is to determine the n g, n 0 basically. So, if you know n t and efficiency, then c q, then you can determine n 0 that initial number of target molecules, but we cannot get absolute number always we have to compare with a known gene which should be multiplied using that relative quantitative PCR then we can making a standard curve and you can determine that how much your uh, DNA of interest is there. So, this is that say 10 times dilution of that known known gene or known DNA sequence and we are running that quantitative PCR and this is the threshold line and we are plotting C q versus log C means your uh, known concentration of the DNA then you will be getting this type of plot and from this you can determine these are two points are unknown that determine that what will be your n 0 value means initial DNA concentration. So, means from that if that efficiency is near about 100 percent, the slope will be around minus 3.32 and on principle if, uh, if it is 100 percent efficiency, one molecule of DNA will be multiplied to 10 times within 3.32 cycles means log 10 base 2 equal to 3.32. So, from this standard curve we can know that n 0 value of that unknown DNA sequence. Most real time PCR gene expression studies involve comparing the amount of one genes that is targets amount transcript in a cell than another genes. So, it is relative means quantitation. Can we do PCR by which we can quantitate absolutely? In other words, can we without any background or without any compare that standard things? can we get the DNA sequence of a gene? This is question number 1. Second is that say in a sample when that contaminant DNA you have to determine means it is a its concentration is very less normal OH PCR or any other OH you cannot determine. So, how you can go about? Basically, can we determine that we are asking the question single DNA molecule by PCR, but normal way you cannot do because to generate that signal we need around 10 to the power 11 DNA molecules by which we can determine that fluorescent intensity. But to get 10 to the power 11 molecules, your starting DNA molecules would be around 10 to the power 3, means 10 to the power 3 into 30 cycles 2 to the power 30 in 10 microliter is equivalent to 10 to the power 11 microliter. So, normal way we cannot do PCR of single DNA molecule. So, how it could be done? It is possible if we decrease that concentration of DNA mix in the nanometer scale, same DNA concentration, if we come around that one DNA molecule 30 cycles in 10 nanometer, then it will be coming 10 to the revolution. Means, if we can go about nanometer scale, then only we can get that your uh, PCR should be done. So, what is the advantage of microfluidic PCR? Why we shall go for microfluidic PCR? Microfluidic device offers small thermal mass, low thermal inertia and rapid heat transfer. This is the behavior of any microfluidic system. The small volume reduce sample and reagent consumption leading to inexpensive operation of the systems. The microscale system Diffusive mass transport and heat conduction are fast due to the characteristics length scale. And 
A 10 microliter sample could perform 20 cycles PCR within 90 seconds. Normally, it takes around say 2 hours. So, we can decrease the time 2 hours to maybe 90 seconds, maybe some efficient system still it is coming around say 60 seconds. So, this is that just a demonstration how that microfluidic chip is developed on the PCR system. Uh, this is that thermal cycler things and what that all that things will be going on. Then we can read out that all that real time PCR by which we can get that relative quantification of that PCS uh, products. So, in the microfluidic platform as we are interested to quantify single DNA molecule and PCR mix volume should be in the nanoliter then droplet fluidics come into the picture and here the droplet PCR or digital PCR. So, principle of digital PCR is that the sample is divided into many independent partitions such that each contain either a few or a no target. So, droplet should be in such a way that droplet volume either it have a one target or no target. The distribution of the target sequence in the partitions can be approximated by the Poisson's distributions. And each partition acts as an individual PCR microreactor and partitions containing amplified target sequence are detected by fluorescence method normal your by using that uh, confocal microscopy or uh, fluorescent activated cell sorting instrument. The ratio of positive partitions means presence of fluorescence over the total number allows the determination of the concentration of target sample and this is a absolute. You have not to compare with any uh, standard things and as it is a all or none phenomenon means one droplet will be giving a signal which is positive and another droplet which have nothing or no signal that is be 0 means 0 1 that is why droplet PCR is another name is your digital PCR. So, that platform there are varieties of platforms to generate that nanoliter scale droplets here that simple platform is that this is your sample containing that PCR mix and uh, your DNA, uh, DNA or any samples and this is a silicon oil fluorinated silicon oil and this fluorinated silicon oil pinched that sample in a nanoliter scale volume by which that single DNA molecule will be trapped along with PCR mix. Then this will be put in a thermocycler and you will be getting fluorescence and fluorescence will be monitored by your fluorescent activated cell sorting machine or using a DP based uh, 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 instrument. And that whole that setup is integrated in a lab on a chip platform. This is the platform it is blown up figure is here that this is the T junction where that micro droplets are formed and thermocycle then it is monitored by that your CCD camera going to the computer and you will be getting a, a positive signal out of that you can calculate that absolute number of DNA of interest present in the droplets. So, what are the application of droplet PCR or digital PCR? Measurement of copy number variation in genetically modified organism, prenatal fetal karyotyping or karyotyping of plants, gene expression in human disease models, epigenetic control of gene expression in cancer, gene amplification in cancer, detection of rare sequence variants detection of host DNA contaminant and recombinant protein preparation like say therapeutic protein generally we are expressing in E. coli or yeast. If that protein conta, uh, preparation content say uh, few picogram level or femtogram level DNA that cannot be detected by normal ways. So, droplet PCR is the answer for that and it is a based on the principle of microfluidics. So, another platform is a DNA microarray. So, DNA microarray is a platform where you can assay that thousands of amplicons or say DNA sequence and it is very much necessary when you are going for a DNA expression analysis or some single nucleotide polymorphism or so and so forth lot of cases we can use that. So, DNA microarray basic principle is that this thousands of spots 
samples are acted as a known probes immobilized on a solid support means it is a combination of both solid phase and liquid phase uh, reaction basically and that as it is a, these spots are located in the particular space or particular position that position we know that which probe is where that is very important when you are giving large scale of uh, microarray. Now, the spots may be oligonucleotide of length 15 to 25 base sequence and unknown DNA sequence tag with the fluorescence hybridize with the probe complementarily and it took around 24 to 40, 48 hours as it is a diffusion, diffusion based reactions. After that hybridization that stringent washing step is followed it takes lot of time to remove that means non specific bindings which are not hybridized properly even its strength of DNA micro array is that if it is one eucleotide is not matching then that will be washed out during stringent washing. So, we can get information about thousands of genes by this DNA microarray. This is a very highly powerful uh, setup. And its main applications are microarray expression analysis, healthy persons with versus disease cells, like say this is a very example where that we are uh, comparing that normal cells is a green and disease cells is red when that sequence present in both the cases you will be getting yellow and then you will be getting nothing when nothing is there. In that way you can generate the microarray spots. And it could be used for comparative genoming hybridization, identification of increase or decrease of important chromosomal fragments etcetera. So, what are the advantage of microarray? It is high throughput analysis parallel analysis of thousands of probes spotted on the microarray and their complementary targets. And now that miniaturization is in the scale of you can spot around 5000 to 500,000 spots per square centimeter almost we are reaching that maximum level of spotting different technologies are used nowadays. And in with respect of safety concern as there is no radioactivity used only fluorescence probes are used. So, DNA microarray is very I means comfortable or it can tell that safety with respect of that hazards concern. But what are the limitations? Limitations are that lack of accuracy and reproducibility at different experimental phases. What are the experimental phases? Sample preparation and labeling hybridization and post hybridization washing this is very important and image acquisition and low dynamic range of detection means low dynamic range means your detection limit concentration upper and lower limit is not very high within a limited zone of concentration you can do it. And furthermore it is depends on the skill of the person who is doing the experiment and lack of automation further reduces the accuracy of reproducibility and it needs highly skilled personnel high cost and prolonged procedure around say 48 hours. Where the time is constant can you reduce that time 48 hours to around say um, few hours in the scale of hours. So, that again we can utilize that microfluidic principle by which that molecules will be coming together not by diffusion definitely by diffusion, but diffusion length scale will be decreased due to the micro confinement. So, here that microfluidic DNA microarray basic principle is that you have a microarray chip where that microarray is spotted and your sample should be passed through that chip with a certain speed and, and with a some additional uh, some attributes like say oscillating flaps and etcetera by which that surface concentration of that DNA molecules which will be probed means which should be assessed there will be concentration will be increased. And, and it took around say 2 hours and 3 to 4 fold higher intensity will be getting with respect of that normal PCR. 
So, here, here is the demonstration that uh, uh, herring bond indentation is used to for mixing that uh, your means microarray and that what DNA uh, single stranded DNA should be assessed and you will be getting the spot then you analyze the spots. So, this time frame 2 hour could be decreased in the scale of minute scale by using oscillating flaps and this type of oscillating flaps, uh, flaps is discussed by Professor Chakravarti in his previous classes by which the DNA hybridization time will be reduced to in the scale of say uh, 40 minutes to 60 minutes. Now, we are coming that lab on a cheap platform starting from that sample preparation to readouts like say may be your uh, microarray readouts or if you look for that PCR products in a in one platform. So, this is an example where we are looking for single nucleotide polymorphism in a uh, samples. So, here you are giving that bio sample like say blood. So, lysis buffer, then mix, then PCR reagent, this is a mixing chamber and this is the PCR area where that thermocycling is going on and your DNA is amplified, then probe dyes, then again mixing, then it is a your microarray. So, all these platforms extraction, amplification, detection in one platform that is that lab on a chip which can detect a sample within a say 15 to 20 minutes starting from incorporation of the samples to get that read. This is microarray based system, same type of system can be adopted another lab on a chip platform where that your PCR mix here means PCR sample then it is passed through a one capillary electrophoresis and using that capillary electrophoresis you can do that PCR product means qualitative detection of the spots and that can be adopted for DNA sequencing also using Sanger's methods. So, using as we have discussed that microarray technology for DNA that is the common principle of any other type of te array technology. So, in our lab we have developed protein array particularly say lectin array for detecting that glycoproteins in some disease cases that glyco glycosylation pattern of proteins are changed. So, if we can assess that what is that glyco profiling of that sample using the lectin array, we have to have an idea of that what is the status of the samples. So, we have developed that lectin microarray principle is same here that lectin microarray where we have spotted 17 types of lectins of different sugar binding pockets and each of the spots containing 12 spots around say 122 micrometer diameter. So, principle is that healthy persons are getting the samples and uh, from that uh, sample we are isolated that glycoproteins from that membranes total protein we are isolating rather than glycoproteins and from the patients also doing the same things and we are using that lectin microarray to detect that glycoprofiling. So, here is that array one of the spots amplified form there is a four spots of each spot is about distant 270 micrometer and one spot diameter is 120 micrometer. Then protein mix labeled with FIDC fluorescent isothiocyanate and pass through that microfluidic uh, channel around say uh, uh, 4 microliter per minute around say 4 minute and after that you are giving just one washing and then generate that uh, fluorescent isothiocyanate in that FITC level uh, spots. Then we will analyze the spots using MATLAB to determine the intensity. So, what you are getting these type of results this is healthy persons this is type B gastritis this is gastritis adenocarcinoma and type C 
and you see that these are the red indicates that uh, that is highly increasing value, then yellow indicates that moderate value and then green indicates little high. With this color coding, we can have a glyco profiling of the three types of patients disease status with respect to healthy control that what is there means glyco and status of the protein these are the all 17 lectins of different means your sugar binding activity. So, in that way we can utilize that microfluidic principle to reduce the time of experiment say 5 minutes to 10 minutes to get that result. Now, question arises at what situation that microfluidic technology will be used particularly country like us. I think that in the three situation we can utilize this microfluidic technology for biochemical analysis. First point is that when that sample volume is very less or concentration of the sample is less like say amniotic fluid or say cerebrospinal fluid or say neonatal sample where you have to analyze very few microliter or nanoliter of samples. Then if you want to parallel experiments in a short period, say if you want to DNA sequence or you want to amplify that, uh, that PCR products or RT-PCR things, lot of samples in a very short period of times. And lastly, if you want to have a rare sequence, if you want to detect within a very short period, say particularly say disease detection in remote places where that not enough facilities are there, where you can use this type of strips like things or lab on a chip type of, uh, type of things, where you can detect two or three type of disease together means multiplexing that can could be detected. So, these are the situations where we can utilize this type of microfluidic platform. Okay. 